Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my little corner of the interwebs. You already know what it is. It's gonna be a new makeup releases video and I know I missed the last week so I apologize. I don't know what I was doing. No, I do know what I was doing. I was celebrating my birthday again. January is my birthday month so <laughs> it's been like a month of celebrations but my sisters did take me on a birthday dinner cruise and it was so much fun you guys. Like I, I had such a good time. Um, I didn't really know what it was. I know that I wanted to be on the water, in the water, near the water or something. So I sent them this cruise <laughs> that I literally randomly found and I was like, this is what I want to do for my birthday. So they, it was actually supposed to be a brunch, but it turned out not enough people bought the brunch ticket. So it ended up being a dinner, which actually worked out really nice. So it's this dinner cruise where you basically like go along and you see like the whole Philadelphia city line. It's like, you know, the city skyline. It's absolutely glorious. Um, so, so, uh, we ended up, uh, they ended up booking the cruise for me and it turned out to be a real good time. So it's like dinner and a party. I thought you just go, you eat and then the boat drive up and down and then you come back. But no ma'am, there's a whole, like on the upper deck, there was a whole dance floor and a DJ. A DJ who played Caribbean music, by the way. Like he played soca and he played soca good. I was like, this man don't know nothing about no soca. But once we got upstairs he started off with Afro beats and I was like, okay, that's suspicious. <laughs> Cause like, I mean, if you start in with Afro beats, I know it's about to be a good time. So he started off with Afro beats and then he worked his way up to the soca and I was like, okay, ma'am. So, you know, I was there, get, you know, get my little wine on because you can't be in Trinidad for carnival. So I was like, I'm a wine on this boat today. But yeah, so that's what I was doing last Sunday. So I didn't get a chance to film my new makeup releases video. So I hope you understand and you forgive me. But what that means is now that we have a lot to cover. So I'm going to just scooch over to the side and dive right in. As always, we're going to be using makeup on my radars, uh, makeup on your radars Instagram page. So make sure you go and give Jamie a follow. And if this is your first time watching me, welcome. Just for a little bit of context on my channel, on my little corner of the interwebs, I like to focus on high-end luxury and indie makeup. But from the perspective of not paying full price, I don't believe in paying full price makeup. So I try to share all of my tips and tricks for how to get it at the best price. What are the best sales, the best deals, all that fun jazz. So if that sounds like your cup of tea and you are already not subscribed, I mean, the little subscribe button is right there. So <laughs> hit that subscribe button, join the fam, and let me scooch over and we'll dive into all of the new makeup releases. Okay. So per usual, I'm really only going to talk about things that I find quite interesting and that you all might find interesting. So I'm, I'm going to end up skipping a couple of things um, that I just don't think you guys are interested in talking about. And I'm going to, of course, tell you guys like what I feel about it. Am I interested in picking it up? What I think about if it will go on sale. And of course, we're going to get into some things about the price. Now, I do think that we are seeing brands pick up the new makeup releases because we got like that two week reprieve in January or well, it's still January. <laughs> we got that two week for reprieve from all of the makeup releases, but it is back to like concert releases. And we're also coming up on the Valentine's Day season. So I know all of these brands have their Valentine's collections that are being launched. So I think that's where we're at. Okay, so Ola Hendrickson has a new lip treatment. It's their hydrating peptide lip treatment. And it looks like it comes in a couple of different flavors. I guess you want to call it that. Like, what do you call a lip balm that's a different, like, color? I feel flavors, right? Uh, it's going to be $22 a piece. Personally, these types of things don't appeal to me because I feel like <laughs> you could put some Vaseline on your lips and you'll be fine. I feel like you could get a lip balm from the Dollar Tree and be fine. So when I see really expensive lip balm type things, it just seems like a scam to me. So paying $22 for essentially a flavored lip balm doesn't seem like a good time or a smart decision. I don't know if that is just my thoughts and <laughs> there's actually some science beside, behind why this is so expensive because it does say that it has lip specific peptides. Like what does that mean? Cocom, that cannot be the correct pronunciation. Cocom and mango seed butter and cloud berry oil. Again, I feel like Vaseline does an equally fine job. You know what I mean? But that might just be me. Anyways, $22 and that's that on that. <laughs> okay, so Adept Cosmetics has been sneak peeking this Flying Fiddles palette, which 
I'm not sure when it's going to be coming. I'm assuming that this is going to be a February release. Um, it's going to retail for $62, which I think is on par with the Adept pricing. Honestly, Adept seems to have figured it out that nobody wants that $145 or $35 palette. So I feel like they've settled into their $60 price point, which to be quite honest, I do think $60 pushes the limit of what I'm comfortable with. Like I would love to see palettes at a max of $50, maybe $55. But I will give Adept leeway because I do think that Adept Cosmetics has better packaging than most indie brands. Like they give us that faux leather feel with the little metallic thing on the front that has the name of the palette. Like they're giving us quality. They're giving us borderline close to luxury packaging. You know what I mean? So, and their pans are magnetic. So I do think that they have some credibility and some ability to be like, okay, this is why we're charging what we're charging. So it's going to be $62, of course, or to my knowledge, you're going to be able to use affiliate codes. I do have one with the brand. It's just Jamila and you'll save 10%, which in theory will bring it down to under $60, which is great. I do think that Adept shipping pricing is expensive though. <laughs> like they did their shipping. Honestly, the 10% really kind of only covers shipping. So I don't know, but um, it is what it is. I, there's a little flower that kind of shows I'm guessing what the potential color story is going to look like. I don't know what a flying fiddle is. Maybe I need to do some research. Hmm. So it says the color story is warm toned, grungy, and very neutral. Now I am intrigued. Y'all know I love me some colorful eyeshadow, but a neutral palette? It, it warms me in a different kind of way. So, hmm. Now I'm even more excited about this because it's going to be neutral. So yeah, I'm very, very, very interested in that. It'll be four mattes, 11 shimmers, four mattes. Mm, okay, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited. So it definitely is, the, it, so it's based on the Siberian iris flower. This is pretty, it has that kind of yellow to it. Okay, I don't even know what this palette is going to look like, but I promise you I'm I'm gonna pick it up <laughs> unless it's really really ugly and then we'll then we'll have a different conversation anyways micah beauty shop is sneak peeking a palette did we talk about this already uh okay they're doing this one shadow at a time reveal i don't got time for that just just show us the palettes and let us live you know what i mean but i'm gonna mind my business and keep going okay let's talk about zygos beauty <laughs> Now, a couple of you guys did send this to me, and when I first saw it, I was like, okay, another multi-chrome palette, another indie brand that I've never heard of in my life, you know. Okay, we keep we will keep seeing indie brands popping up. I don't think that that's going anywhere. So I was already over it because, you know, I'm on my no new brands kick. And I scrolled, and this palette is $130. $130. I was like, Jesus, be a fence. Because I I don't understand. Now, I was like, okay, let me pause. Let me go and do a little bit of... Let me just, let me just look a little bit further. So this palette, I believe, is 30... Not 30. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 20 shades. You have four mattes and the rest are multi-chromes and I have a couple of <laughs> I have a couple of thoughts first and foremost I am not into brands that do a lot of these super crazy multi-chromes with minimal shimmers I don't know what it is about it but I would rather have more mattes than shimmers I that's probably why I prefer the blend bunny formula uh, that much because I don't know it's just I don't think we need the excessive amount of shimmers, in my opinion. I also think that when brands do these large palettes with all of these multi-chromes, it doesn't feel like they actually put effort into curating a color story. It feels like they just picked a bunch of multi-chromes and threw it into a palette and gave us four basic browns that everybody needs. You know what I mean? Um, and I also think that consumers have been saying loud and clear for some time now that we are not comfortable with these prices that the brands are charging so I feel like it would behoove brands to give us smaller cheaper palettes more curated color stories so instead of giving us a giant palette that has 20 multi chromes give us a nine pan palette 
Give us a six pan palette. Give us something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more curated, 12 pans even. Smaller, more curated, that has a color story and it doesn't just look like you threw a bunch of multi-chromes into a palette and gave us the basic neutrals that could pair with every single multi-chrome. Now this is the first release from the brand so I understand in some ways why those four basic mattes make sense because they will go with every single multi-chrome in the palette. But I also don't think it's the smartest decision to release an $130 eyeshadow palette. And I don't... I... <laughs> and I, 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 I was talking to a couple of friends about this. And I said this in the chat there. That it takes some kind of delusion. And I wish I had that level of delusion in my life where you could just put out a $130 eyeshadow palette. Just... Just throw it on out there. Um, and, you know, I'm already uncomfortable with the Tom Fords, the Chanel's, you know, those brands giving us crazy palettes. But I also recognize and understand the luxury that comes to purchasing from those brands. And I also recognize and understand the luxury that comes to purchasing from a Pat McGrath, a Natasha Denona, a Charlotte Tilbury. These are world-renowned makeup, makeup artists who have earned their titles and earned the right in my opinion to sit at these luxury tables and charge these luxury prices uh so i get it even though you know they're all overpriced for sure but to just throw out a 130 dollar eyeshadow palette as your first palette who are you like <laughs> i'm i'm just confused to play devil's advocate because you guys know i'm gonna give you guys both sides i'm not buying this and i'm definitely not comfortable with the price point but to play devil's advocate, I did go to the brand Instagram page and what I've learned is that this is a brand that's based in India. Um, I don't know where the shadows are made, I don't know where they're sourced from, I don't know what the process is for them creating this. I'm going to anticipate or guess, I should say, that some of the cost of this palette can be associated to the fact that it is a international brand and it might be really expensive or hard for them in sourcing their materials. And that's a, just a guess. That's just me guessing that with literally no evidence to back it up. So I can't tell if it's hard to source these materials in India, but that is, that is my guess. And that is what I'm trying to attribute to the price of this palette being what it is. I'm still not comfortable with it. I still think it's too expensive. I think... <laughs> um, because it's 130 US, which means that if I were to purchase this, God alone knows what shipping and whatever else is going to cost to add that up, which means that that palette, once it gets to us in America, is going to be well over $130. Um, and I also, quite frankly, I did some re <laughs> I did some digging, and it's like 10,000 whatever rupees, I think is the currency. So it's 10K for like whatever the Indian currency is, which is about a third of the average salary there, according to Google's. And I think asking people to pay a third of the, of the average salary for an eyeshadow palette is a bit much. Yes, so <laughs> I say all that to say I'm not buying this. I'm not comfortable with it. It does look beautiful. The shades look fine. I, I do think that the color story seems chaotic and it doesn't seem to have much of a color story. It just seems to be a all multi-chrome eyeshadow palette with some mattes in there and been there, done that, not interested. So let's move along because we spent a lot of time there. So Pat McGrath, and I saw this when I went to the website but I didn't say anything about it. She's repackaged her primer in a much better packaging. If y'all knew that packaging she had from before, when I talk about ghetto and cheap, like the sticker was peeling off and I was like, Patricia, this is not, this is not luxury, ma'am. The sticker was peeling off. You could pull the thing out of the bottle. It was a mess, complete garbage. So I'm glad that they're repackaging this. I do think that it might need, to, it should be reformulated as well. This isn't the best primer. I'll say that straight up. Like it feels like a bit of a moisturizer, It did, but in that it also didn't add anything. Like I could have put on any moisturizer on my face and it would have done the same thing. It didn't blur the pores. It didn't, you know, plump the face or anything like that. It just didn't do anything. So I don't, even at this new packaging, I don't think you should buy it. 
that's just my assessment. So Beauty Bay has their new Reckless Romance palette. I do believe this is available now. This seems like it's their Valentine's Day release. This is a beautiful palette. The Beauty Bay formula is one that I used to purchase way back in the way back. And at one point I did enjoy it. Um, but as I started playing with more formulas and I feel like brands continue to improve their quality, I feel like Beauty Bay definitely got knocked down multiple pegs. So for one, <coughs> I think the mattes are extremely hard to blend. They are pressed pigments, but like, <coughs> oh Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me for talking smack about Beauty Bay. What is happening? Okay, where's my water? Yeah, so the mattes were a little bit hard to blend. They were extremely pigmented, so that was never an issue. But I feel like once you put them on the lid, they kind of just stayed where they were and you were really like working in there to get it to blend. Um, so, I started to fall out of love with the mattes and then the shimmers were kind of that squishy formula where they were a little bit hard to transfer from the brush to the lids or from the finger to the lids. So it just became a little too much work to use their palettes so I stopped purchasing them. I don't know if the formulas changed in any way for more fashion. What I will say is that this palette is beautiful. Like honestly, color story, <laughs> 10 out of 10. And I say that knowing that this is a pinky palette but it's a cool toned pink palette and I feel like this is just pretty unique. You know what I mean? It's not like the standard pinks in my opinion. Maybe I'm making that up in my mind, but it definitely feels like a very unique, cool toned palette. And looking at these swatches, it looks absolutely stunning on that darker arm. Like I, I could get behind this if the formula has improved. I don't know what the price of this is, but I also know Beauty Bay has always been relatively affordable. Like their palettes used to be like $20. Maybe it's gone up in price slightly, but like if it is still around that 20 something dollar price range, I definitely think it might be worth, you know, looking, looking into it, giving it a second glance and figuring it out. Okay, so Notoriously Morbid, they have their Love Fool collection. I'm gonna assume that this is their Valentine's Day release. The packaging on this is actually quite cute. Um, that kind of clone crying face girl thing. Uh, the swatches on this are nice. It's very different. It's not like the standard pinks for Valentine's Day. Um, in my opinion, like you do get a pink, but there's blue, purple. It's pretty. I, I definitely like this. There's no neutral really look in this, uh, but this is pretty. Uh, the palette is gonna retail for $39.99 and it's available now. You, there are a couple of matte lipsticks as well. And those are $12.99 each and the lip glosses are $8.50 each. So the lipsticks and the lip glosses seem to be really affordable. So that's actually kind of cool. Um, and of course you can use a affiliate code to save 10, I think it's 15%. So radar 10 will save, radar sorry 15 will save you 15% or you could use Cara Beauty and the Frizz's code. I think it's Frizz Face 15 to save 15% off. Um, Notoriously Morbid is still in timeout for me. You guys know I love Notoriously Morbid. They are handmade, hand pressed, like it's a very unique formula. It does take a little bit of, you know, finagling to work with. It's not the easiest formula to work with, but it is unique because of that, like it being so handmade. Um, but they're not shipping people their products. <laughs> and I don't mean that to say that they're not getting it to them at all, but when you order from Notoriously Morbid, the processing time is 20 to 25 days. That's about a month. And I, I get it, they are handmade eyeshadow brand. Where I take issue with is the fact that they are constantly releasing products before they have shipped the other products to people. I That, that bothers me. <laughs> like, the fact that you have taken time out of your day to release, develop, promote an entirely new collection before you have given people the products that they've ordered a month or so before... Is annoying and I've seen people comment that on the, some of their, their their posts as well because I get the frustration and the reason why it bothered me is because I used to be very interested in almost every single Notoriously Morbid release and shipping isn't exactly like a a cost that you want to continue paying so like my issue and I'm, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm not like saying the wrong thing so I'm, I don't know why I'm trying to mince my words because that's not what we do here but basically if I buy a palette 
and it hasn't shipped to me and then I and then you guys release another palette and I'm interested in that as well and then I buy that now I'm paying double the shipping cost and that's a problem for me because I could have just sat down waited and just picked it all up in one sweet flush and not pay shipping twice and then the other thing too about Notoriously Morbid that I think they need to figure out like is this really what they want to keep doing is that they discontinue things so quickly like they just discontinue products in a heartbeat and I don't know if like the brand is centered around continuous limited edition releases because to me it seems like nothing is permanent in their brand and um give, even though I like the eyeshadow formula I don't think it makes sense for me as a creator to invest in notoriously morbid releases because y'all can't buy it <laughs> like what is the point of me buying a product testing it reviewing it after waiting a month to pick it up so it takes me a month to get the product I buy I review it and then the product doesn't even exist anymore that doesn't make sense to me so like I don't know what it is with the brand I do think that they need to figure out their shipping to their own times because I, I do think it's it's putting a very bad taste in the mouth of their consumers and making people not want to buy. Not gonna lie, they released at least three palettes last year that I wanted to pick up, but I didn't because I was like, ain't no way, ain't no way I'm gonna be waiting a month for a palette and then y'all keep releasing palettes. Okay, that's not what we do. So <laughs> that is just kind of where I'm at with the brand. But let me know. Are you guys checking for them? Did this in interest you? Where, where are we with that? So Electrum Cosmetics. <sighs> Their Heart Breaker palette is available this Friday. I guess it's available now or next week Friday. No, eh, I guess it is available now. Maybe. Um, I don't, it's eight multi-chromes and one holochrome and it's $75. Who is asking for this? Asking for a friend. Asking for myself. Asking for y'all. Who is asking for this? Who is asking for these $75, $80, $90 dollar multi-chrome palettes? Not me. I'm... And I... This is going to sound bad, maybe. But I find it to be quite lazy when brands do full-on multi-chrome palettes <laughs> this is oh this video is getting spicy but i find it to be lazy when brands give us these just here's a multi-chrome palette because all you've done is put a bunch of singles into a palette there's no color story there's no theme there's nothing behind it it doesn't feel special it doesn't feel like you put any thought into it it feels like you picked eight nine random multi-chromes that might have a pretty flip and threw it in a palette and i don't like that <laughs> I think that's why I gravitate towards brands like Fantasy Cosmetica. Hell, even this Shall We Cosmetics, whatever they're called, this Miss Witch palette, which I'm wearing on my lids now. You know, brands that actually give me call a story, brands that actually give me theme, those are the things that I look for. But like, just to give me six multi-chromes or whatever, however much of multi-chromes that you threw together in a palette and said, hey, no, I just don't, I don't want it. It just feels lazy. Y'all, this is becoming very spicy and I apologize, but that's where I'm at. Like, what is this even called? Heartbreaker. What about this palette is a heartbreaker? Please explain the theme and the color story to me because I don't understand it. This is becoming a roast. <laughs> Let's just keep going um, because, oh, this is making me mad. So the ultraviolet palette from Bella Beauty Ba in collaboration with Deandra or DeAndre, I might be pronouncing that wrong. Uh, Nicole is available now. Um, this is a beautiful palette. It is $62. Um, what do we get? Two, four, six, seven mattes and two, four, six, eight. Eight multi-chromes. Now this is a complete purple palette. Um, I wish it was a little bit smaller, a little bit more curious because that's a lot of purple, but honestly it might just be all the purple you need. So if you are really into purples, I think that you will love this. Uh, Deandra is a black creator. She does these swatches for most of these indie brands. Um, so you know, this is going to work on melanated skin, okay? Uh, I do think you might be able to use an affiliate code to save 10%, but I'm not sure because, you know, these things don't exactly, particularly collabs with, with, creators don't typically have codes for them so maybe maybe not um I do think it's absolutely beautiful um I'm just not into like a full like purple isn't exactly my color of choice I'll start there and for monochromatic palettes I need them to be small <laughs> I need them to be really really small uh so this might just be too much for me and then they also have this dead roses palette too that the brand put out it's $69 
Um, and it's a mix of reds and purples. Why are the, both of these out at the same time? Like, just give us one, you know what I mean? Like, okay. Uh, neither of this I'm buying. I find the Bellaby Bop price point to be a little bit too high for me. I have one palette from the brand and I thought that it was okay. I didn't think that the formula was unique or special enough or special period. Honestly, for the price point, like it, I was like, this feels familiar. I'm not claiming that this is private labeled at all. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm also like, eh, this feels like something I already have. You know what I mean? So while I do think that this is beautiful and a huge congrats to Deandra Nicole, Deandra Nicole, um, Bella B. Ba has been one of those brands that I'm just like, why don't you sit down over there for a little bit, you know? Okay, so Skin, which is the new, or the re-release of Kim Kardashian's brand, which used to be KKW, I guess it's now Skin by Kim Makeup. <laughs> they, Kim is back, I guess. This is the most boring release I have ever, ever seen a brand put out. Like, what was, what was this? One thing I will say though is that this is exactly in point for who brand. This is exactly who Kim Kardashian is brown and basic not even brown beige and brace basic like okay so she gave us an all matte eyeshadow palette cool this is exactly what makeup by mario has already done with his master mattes palette and exactly what you can get out of the isa matte palette i don't know what the price of this is let's see the price of the palette is 50 dollars. that's actually not bad it might be the exact same price of the makeup by mario or even slightly cheaper so you might actually save some money there i don't know where this is where this is made from so i can't tell you in terms of the quality of it i hope that she went up to a higher quality because like her previous products were okay but um maybe kim should look into like luxury labs or something so i don't know i don't know where it's coming from uh but the packaging looks cheap that looks like a piece of basic cardboard with a little baby mirror in it so it doesn't exactly look high quality just from the pictures and then we have these lip pencils and some lipsticks. Now the lipsticks are actually probably the most interesting thing in this release because it actually looks like I could wear every single one of those lip products. I will say that the the range that she chose was absolutely phenomenal and it looks like something that I could wear. Uh, the lip liners, they are complimentary. So I, I like the, the matching lip liner to the lipsticks. Um, I hate that it's that, I hate you have to sharpen it. Is that a thing that they all do? Um, but yeah, I guess you have to sharpen it. Uh, the lip liners are $22. That's a lot for a lip liner. Um, and the lipsticks are $32. Okay. I am intrigued enough to want to try the lipsticks. I don't know if it's, it, it, it's a soft matte formula. So I kind of want to try it. But I also fully recognize that the prices of lipsticks now have gone up significantly. I feel like there was a point where... $30 for lipstick was outrageous because I remember when I picked up my first Lisa Eldridge lipstick which is These are about $36, right? And I was like Jamila, what are you smoking? Like are you okay? Are you high? Because who pays $36 for lipstick, you know? And I thought that that was expensive But now I feel like brands are consistently giving us lipsticks that start at $30 So it's just wild to me that lipsticks have gotten so expensive and I also feel like the Lisa Eldridge lipstick, lipstick formula is impeccable. So I would much rather invest in that than in a KKW or Skin, whatever it's called, lipstick. But I'm curious. And I also would like to know where this is going to be sold. So far, it seems like it's only on the Skin by Kim website. But I'm going to need this to come to like a Sephora or Ulta because I'm not blind buying this. I don't like... And I'm at the point now with a lot of these brands where I don't want to buy something that I can't return. And that's part of the issue that I have with some of these indie products is that they're so expensive that you have to be fully committed to buying a product that you may or may not like knowing that you cannot return it. Because the only returns that they accept are if the product is somehow defective. So that it's just a lot to, be, to ask people to give you 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars for a maybe I'm going to like this, you know? So on Earthly Cosmetics, they have their Valentine's Day mystery box. 
this is kind of interesting. Like, okay, so Anahli is a brand that has actually been raising my little eyebrows, my little hairs <laughs> as of recent. I did pick up a couple of products in January. I think it was in January that were 50% off. So they had a 50% off sale. It's on pre-order, so who knows when it's going to get here. Um, so they they have this mystery box i think it sold out completely so now it's open for pre-order uh one of my biggest challenges with honestly cosmetics is they do a lot of pre-orders and as you all know that is not my my journey anymore in life i need you to have it in stock and ready to ship within three to five business days that's just kind of where i'm at and i think given how long they've been on the market i would like to see them get to that point where they can actually do that um you know like adept has gotten there like blend bunny has gotten there i feel like all of the other indie brands that i know that may have started around the same time as them have gotten past that whole pre-order point in their journey and i think given the hype that honestly has and how far they've come because as from what i hear the, the formula is phenomenal now they've made a ton of improvements the packaging has significantly improved all of that hence why i purchased uh when they had that 50 percent off sale I think that now the big thing for me is like, okay, could you stop doing the pre-orders? So hopefully they'll get there. Um, I don't know what's going to be in this mystery box. Apparently it's 12 full-sized items. <laughs> they did do a little bit of a sneak preview and it looks like at least six of that is lipsticks. <laughs> so just, I want you all to know. And it's $145. Now it is pretty pricey, but 12 full-size items, I think actually that's solid pricing if you were to do the math on that. Um... And I'm pretty sure these are all new. So it's not exactly like it's going to be a old or existing product that you may or may not like. So it's going to be 155, 145, sorry. And you can use a affiliate code to get 10% off. So you would save 1450, which is not um, small. It might actually cover shipping unless they have free shipping over a certain price. I don't know. But yeah. Um, and it's, if you do the pre-order, it's supposed to ship mid-February. Maybe. I don't know. None of my pre-orders ever ship on time. <laughs> so Sicily has a new foundation. Um, it's $125. I I can't say I haven't bought an expensive foundation <laughs> like that before. Like my Lemay foundation is what, $120 maybe? Um, but can we talk about this shade range for a minute? Like, bruh, you have like four shades that... Four deep shades, four deep shades, come on, like, we, why are we doing this now, like, come on, it's just aggravating, um, not surprising, but still aggravating, <laughs> y'all, y'all, okay, they tried it with the shade range, somebody should be in jail, this is stupid, anyways, it's dumb, I'm not buying it, it's like, I'm not spending $125 a no foundation where you only have four deep shades. That is just dumb. YSL has a new bronzer. I'm not going to lie. The packaging on this is stunning. It comes in five shades. Um, and it actually looks really beautiful. So I could probably use warm sandalwood and maybe dark sienna. And I'm looking at these swatches now. And it doesn't look too red. Which is what's getting me excited. Y'all know how I feel about bronzers. Sometimes these bronzers, especially these deep bronzers, have a very red undertone. And I am in a medium deep category. So a lot of times the medium is too light for me. So I have to use the deep, which ends up being too dark and too red for me. Which just makes me look like I've been burnt or punched in the face. It doesn't look good. It looks like I have been injured. And I don't like that look in my life. I'm not interested in looking like I've been smacked across the face. That's not, that's not my journey. So... I like that this doesn't look too red. It is intriguing. I don't know what the price of this is, but I'm actually kind of excited by this. So Fenty Beauty has a new highlighter. I guess they're calling it a luminizer or something like that, maybe? Mm, it's a baked formula. Okay. I don't need any more highlighters. <laughs> I... Like, do you guys even come remotely close to panning highlighters? I feel like all of my highlighters look like they've never been used. And that's just because you don't need as much. I wish highlighters came in much smaller packaging, much smaller sizes, because you, you use so little of it that it's just ridiculous. So highlighters never catch my eye because nobody needs that much, you know? Um, but... Yep, if you needed, if you did need a highlighter, Fenty is a new highlighter. And of course, you know, Riri always comes in clutch with the 
shade range. So I think that the eight highlights, maybe. Oh, they're nine shades. So pretty sure everybody will be able to find a shade there. Okay, so this did catch my eye um, because Bad to the Brow posted about it and I was like, ooh, what is this? And then I actually went to the brand and I'm not gonna lie, I kinda want it. So this is the Get Stoned palette. Is that what it's called? Or I think it's just stoned. It's the stoned palette from Get Stoned. <laughs> so it says, this is one of a kind makeup palette was completely dreamt of, dreamt up by our founder to best match the best-selling Get Stoned Rhinestone packs. So, oh, right, so this brand sells rhinestones. And the, like, they just decided to create a makeup palette. <laughs> so it's very, it's so weird because it's like not a makeup brand and then they're like, oh, let's create a, a um, an eyeshadow palette. So it's these jewel-toned metallic shades that look absolutely beautiful. The palette is $42. I kind of like it, y'all. Like, I really want it, um, but, you know, I don't need a fully metallic palette, but I am intrigued by this. I do believe Millie from Bad to the Brow did pick this up, so I am going to be, you know, looking for her review because I would really, really like to see <laughs> what this is, how it looks and how it swatches. And, damn, she's made me buy so many things. Like, anytime Millie puts up a video, I'm like... There she goes again. Now I need it in my life. So I'm probably going to fall in love with it because of her, but it's okay. It is A-OK. -okay. okay, so two more, and then we will end things off. So Glamlight has a Betty Boo collection coming. I don't think they've fully revealed the collection yet, but, you know, Betty Boo <laughs> is, like, iconic when it comes to Valentine's. Um, Betty Boo is like just iconic in general. It's really funny when I think about Betty Boo now because I'm like, that cartoon would never see the light today. Like, she's always been very sexual, very voluptuous and whatnot. And I'm like, <laughs> you know that's not gonna make it past today's climate. But it is cool that they are doing like an older, you know, cartoon. Uh, Glamlight, and you all know, Glamlight kills a theme. So as much as I wish they didn't always do collabs, I'm guessing that's what they've settled on. They are a collab brand. They are going to work with different entities, whether it be a box of cereal, <laughs> Disney, or, Be you know, Betty Boot. Like, they're going to work with somebody, and they're going to create a collection around it. But I will say they are going to kill the collection. Now, I'm going to assume this is going to be very red, both because it's Valentine's and also because it's Betty Boo. So I'm assuming some red, some yellows, you know, whatever. But... We'll see. Uh, so far, I guess they've sneak peeked the red lipstick, of course, and a mirror. I was not a Betty Boo, like, fan or stan. Like, I knew of it. I thought it was cute, but it's not exactly like I was, like, insanely obsessed with Betty Boo. I was more of a Hello Kitty gal. Yeah, I was definitely into, like, the Hello Kitties, Lisa Frank kind of thing. Like, not necessarily Betty Boo, but, um... I'm interested in seeing what they put out because even though I don't buy every Glamlight collection, I am always looking at every Glamlight collection. For, for sure. And lastly, Colored Rain. Uh, they have the Cam Quad palette. I don't know. Something about this is cute. So it's literally four quads that they turned into a big palette. So like <laughs> 16 shadows but arranged in quads. The packaging does seem a little bit bulky with a lot of like dead space because of this arrangement. Um, but it's cute. It's interesting. Like I like two of the quads, if I'm being honest. Two out of the four quads is what I'm really here for. Yeah, and it, it honestly, it looks a lot like the Nabla palette that they did a while back. So it, it's reminding me of that. What I will say is Colored Rain is... A somewhat affordable brand like this palette is gonna be $36 so it's on the cheaper end of indie right now um, and while I I have tried the colored rain formula I don't think it's exceptional like I know they used to get a lot of hype back in the day but I feel like they have not kept up with these other brands I think there are so many other indie brands that are like outpacing them outshining them right now and it's a little unfortunate you know all right, so that's it, you guys. That's all I have for y'all on these new makeup releases. You know what? I'm not impressed. 
I'm thinking about it and there's really nothing that I'm like, oh yeah, I 100% want that. Other than the Adept Cosmetics release, which I'm very interested in seeing what it is, and maybe Unearthly. Like, I'm going back and forth on Unearthly because the 50, the, pa the two palettes that I paid, purchased at 50% off, I have not got them yet because they were pre-order. So, I personally... <laughs> don't want to spend my money before first trying this new formula. So I refuse to buy something without getting my first two palettes. It's the same stance that I have for Notoriously Morbid. I'm not going to buy nothing until I get what I already purchased. So that's where I'm at. But yeah, so overall, I'm not exactly jumping from the hills or like crazy excited about any of these new releases. I don't think anything's bad, but it's just like, okay, they got things. Um, but let me know, you guys. Is there anything that I talked about that caught your eye? Is there anything that I didn't talk about that you guys are looking into any new release? Um, as always, I want to thank you guys so much for sharing your thoughts on all of these new makeup releases. Leave your orange hearts down below if you don't want to share your thoughts in detail. You know the drill. You know how we do over here. <laughs> thank you guys so, so, so very much for continuing to watch, continuing to support. I appreciate you so much more than you know. And if you have not already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join the fam. She works hard. Um, <laughs> anyways, guys, talk to y'all later. Have a good rest of your day.